The masters of the craft over at Night Dive Studios have been at it again, this time breathing new life into the classic PC shooter Star Wars Dark Forces. Using their incredible Kex engine, did the team do enough to make this game feel fresh? Not only that, but is this Switch version worth taking a look at? We talk about all of this and more in this review. Let's get into it. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Sound off in the comments down below, and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called The Famicast. You can also check out this review in written form over on our website, thefamicast.com. Today, though, we're taking a look at Star Wars Dark Forces Remaster on the Nintendo Switch in this review. Dark Forces puts players into the role of Kyle Katarn, a former Imperial officer turned rogue. Hired by the Rebel Alliance, Katarn aids the Rebellion by taking on a variety of missions to gather intel. Now while doing this, he stumbles upon secret Imperial plans about the development and deployment of a new foe, the dreaded Dark Trooper. Alongside his partner Jan Ors, the two go on a variety of missions across the galaxy. Although the action in the game is in first person, the story here is actually conveyed through text and animated cutscenes. Now, some of these feature 3D ships, while the more character-based story beats feature a semi-animated comic complete with voice work. Now, throughout the experience, players will see plenty of familiar faces, such as Darth Vader, Jabba, and Crix Maydeen from Return of the Jedi. You, probably, you might remember him, maybe not. And you'll also be introduced to new characters, such as this brutal Imperial General, Rom Mok. Now, it's definitely a bit crude by today's standards, but I think there's still really an interesting story here to unravel. Fans of first-person shooters will feel right at home with Dark Forces. Now, controlling Kyle is pretty simple, as the joystick is used to move him around and ZR is used to shoot. Now, the game offers a wide range of weapons here too, from Kyle's Briar Pistol, Stormtrooper Rifles, Thermal Detonators, Mines, a Rocket Launcher, and of course, your bare fists. Now, these can all be changed by holding R and then choosing your weapon of choice with the joystick. Now, aiming here also feels really good on the Switch, and the Switch version actually offers uh, both you know the ability to aim with the right stick and gyro and I found that the gyro was a pretty nice addition here as it allowed kind of for more subtle movement to kind of like fine-tune your aiming here general control and combat here is excellent other secondary items are also implemented into the game such as shields a flashlight infrared goggles a gas mask a map and ice boots now a number of these cannot be used indefinitely such as the ir goggles and the flashlight now when using these players will have to keep an eye on battery usage which could be a little bit annoying now i know when i first started out i didn't realize this and i find myself basically traversing this black pitch black corridor with nothing but the on-screen map to help me out and you know speaking of the map here too pressing select will bring up the the map like the entire map for the stage you can press down on the d-pad and that'll bring it up while you're playing but yeah if when you're in the select menu you can also check the mission objectives weapons that you have and also your current inventory but yeah again general control in dark forces here it feels fresh it's fast paced and it's very responsive there are a total of 14 levels in Dark Forces, and they all have a variety of locations here. Now, these aren't all interior-based missions or like corridor things here either. And some of these missions will take place outside as well as in the likes of like this ice-covered landscape and Imperial City and, and more. But there's also quite a bit of verticality to the levels too, which wasn't really so common at the time as far as I know. Now, even with that said, some of the levels can be a little bit confusing, even with the help of the map. Most of the time, these can be figured out quite easily, however, others will definitely require you to basically comb through levels for something you might have missed. Overall, the level design here is quite nice and quite different from a lot of games from the era of the same genre. Now, you'll, of course, come across tons of familiar enemies in the form of stormtroopers, commandos, imperial officers, and creatures such as Gamorians, Trandoshans, Grands, God, I hate those guys in this game, uh, dark troopers, and more here too. LucasArts nailed this Star Wars aesthetic back in the day, and Night Dive did a fantastic job updating the game for modern platforms. Of course, being a remake of a game from 1995, things look very much like they did in the past, but this time around, this HD coat of paint really make Dark Forces feel incredibly modern. The fans that are looking for something more in line with the original are in luck too. I mean, the game can be toggled to feature either this new update or the old visual style at any point during gameplay. Now, just as an aside here too, I spent most of my time playing Dark Forces Remaster in handheld mode on my Switch OLED. Now, things here remain as fluid as they did on the big screen, and it, things just ran great. So I think whether you're looking to play in your TV or in the palm of your hands, the game is going to look awesome. 
Now, in terms of frame rate, Night Dive Studios targeted 60 frames per second in this version of the game. Now, in the few tests that I ran, the game consistently met this. However, Digital Foundry found that the game can sometimes dip a few frames below that, uh, below this intended target. Now, I should note that I mainly played the game with the default settings, which turned both anti-aliasing and bloom off. But yeah, it seemed like those two things seemed to be the root of the issue. Moving on to sound here, I mean, this is just absolutely fantastic. The in-game tunes here do a really great job of basically recreating what was found in the original movies, kind of like the original scores and stuff like that, and the sound effects here are just perfect. I mean, other additions like Imperial Troops yelling at Kyle to stop in his tracks or something, probe droids buzzing around, all of this stuff captures the essence of Star Wars perfectly here too. Now, dynamic music is also present here. Now, this was something that was actually in the original release of the game, thanks to this LucasArts developed uh, engine called iMuse, which stands for Interactive Music Streaming Engine. Now, while this is pretty common in games now, this really helps Dark Forces feel much more like a movie as like these musical cues transition basically seamlessly between each other. Now basically, yeah, let's think about it. You're wandering through a seemingly safe area of a stage and all of a sudden you're greeted by enemies. And this is, you know, it's always a bit nerve wracking and even more so with the music kind of implementing that type of a, a feeling as well. Now this just goes to show how forward thinking LucasArts was back in the day. Really kudos to them on such a really awesome thing to put into a game and just Night Dive Studios just to bring it back just to us today. Star Wars Dark Forces Remaster is a fantastic remake of a classic game. The game looks absolutely great, sounds awesome, and runs pretty well on the Switch. Now, the updates that Night Dive Studios made to the game visually and the subtle changes made to the controls feel modern and just basically amazing. Now, aside from some confusing levels, the game shines as another excellent remaster from the studio. Now, if you played the original back in the day or are just looking to experience it for the first time, this is definitely the best way to experience this classic. Not only that, but there also are some extra bonuses. There's an extra stage that you can play that was not in the original game that was shown off at like trade shows and stuff like that. That's here. You can see a lot of like behind the scenes artwork and stuff like that, too. This really is a full package. But let's go ahead and turn things over to you guys. Did you pick up Dark Forces Remaster? What platform? Did you play the game back in the day? What's your favorite weapon? Sound off in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. For the record, this is my first time going through the game. And as for the weapon, I'd have to say, maybe the Imperial Repeater. I thought that was pretty cool. Anyways. Now, as always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, looks at Japan exclusive games, and a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.